my husband and I went on safari and in a little hut was a gift shop and they sold elephant dung paper. And I bought several pieces and sent them to my pop-up friends, the paper engineers, saying, well, what are you going to do with this? And so Ed Hutchins, who is just a great dear, he made this for me, thinking of you. This is an elephant made of elephant dung paper. That's really the circle of life right there. <laughs> That's recycling at its <laughs> best. I am Ellen G.K. Rubin, and I collect pop-up and movable books and paper. I think I wanted to know a, a, a body of work uh, instead of a smattering of this and that, something that I could sink my teeth into. And wanting to be an expert on something was a goal. I get contacted by scholars, people doing their theses. They come here, they do some research here, or they inquire of me because I literally get it from around the world of uh, people are doing research on the flap books or on the Vauvels. I would go to a cocktail party or a place where I didn't know many people and people will say, well, what do you do? Uh, do you work? That question was always answered. Do you mean outside the home? Uh, and I went to Yale Medical School to be a physician associate. Most people call a physician assistant. And then when I was working outside the home, I said, oh, I do bone marrow transplants. And they immediately left my side. I have to refresh my drink or something. Nobody wanted to know anything about what I did. And so I quickly learned to say, oh, well, I collect and write about pop-up immovable books. And their instant smile, which we call the smile effect, and they would say, oh, I love those books. When I have the opportunity to talk to people about pop-ups, there are three things I want them to know. One, they did not start in the 1970s the way these Random House books did. And the earliest books, and I just showed you one from 1547, were not for children. They were for adults, and they were used as instruments, mathematics, astronomy, astrology, and medicine. This is from 1933. There are text describing what a woman can do to be a better sex partner. And so when you say a picture is worth a thousand words, a movable is worth so much more. To this day, every movable book is handmade. I tell this story when I was in first grade. The class subscribed to Humpty Dumpty magazine. And so it was for first graders, and with scissors and glue, you could make things. And then, when we got to second grade, my classmates graduated to Children's Digest, and I refused because Children's Digest didn't have things to make. I enjoy doing this, but I don't have the skills that these require, and actually most most conservators do not have the skill. I consider myself a cheerleader. And when I started collecting, publishers did not put the paper engineer's name anywhere in the book. That seemed to me criminal because it's not a pop-up book without a paper engineer. And that's where I got the idea that Paper engineers, and I didn't even know the term at that point, but paper engineers are the artists who take the illustrations and make them move, and that they are puppet masters, but they hand the strings to us, the reader. We are the ones who activate everything, who make them come alive. My son knows I collect elephants, and so he created this Build-A-Bear, and he sewed this little pop-up book onto the elephant, and he created this. I love the pop-up lady. She's my very best friend. <laughs> <laughs>